Welcome to The Art of Social Media, a podcast by Social Pilot. We host in-depth discussions with world-leading social media marketing experts that will help you discover the techniques, strategies, and skills you need to use to grow your business using social media. Now, here's your host, Tejas Mehta. How do new brands compete in social media right now? Uh, it's a noisy place. Organic is dead. Influencer marketing can take time if they are a new brand. Uh, how how do we get started as a new brand? Influencers, and the easiest way is give away your product. There, there's no shortcut to this. And the reason why I'm saying, well, you might need to pay people it depends on how how much your product is, right? If you have a five dollar product. It's one thing, but if you have a $25, $50, $100 product and it really fits the needs of people, which it should because you're a new company, that's why you developed a new product, there is no better way than to seed the market, get word of mouth going by gifting product to influencers. That would be the number one strategy. And it doesn't have to take time, right? Um, you can start doing research today, reach out tomorrow, ship it out two days from now. If the influencer really likes the product, maybe a week from now, they'll post about it on social media. That to me is the shortcut. Now, I would also do some paid social because that's the quickest way to get the word out. The problem with paid social is it's a cold audience. That's why I love the idea of leveraging user-generated content for your advertisements. And all the data shows that when you leverage user-generated content for your Instagram ads, for your Facebook ads, that performs way better than a company trying to create the ad themselves. So when you give the product out, say, hey, I'd be honored if you posted about it. If you post about it, would would you allow me to use that in an advertisement? I'll be sure to tag you or you know let you know when it goes live. Um, you really want to build relationships because the influencers should become your number one marketing channel. And instead of paying Zuckerberg money for Facebook ads, you can actually you know put that money in a product and shipping fees and get it out into the hands of people that can actually help promote it. So without a doubt, that is the number one strategy. And that, you know, I do have some case studies in the age of influence of companies that did just that. They didn't have a marketing budget, but they knew it was a great product. They knew if it got into the hands of the right people that they would become natural salespeople, you know, influencers, uh, and they reap the benefits of doing that. Uh, interesting. So influencer marketing is more innovative and more important as day goes by. Uh, new brands can leverage that as well. That's that's great to know. Uh, back to social, uh, what type of content is winning? Is video winning? Are short videos, you know, the need of the hour? Uh, what's changing in the content type? The content that's winning is the content that the algorithms favor. And right <laughs> now, the content that the algorithms favor is short form video. Um, I mean, TikTok is entirely short form video. Go into your uh, Instagram, and I just see more and more reels. Some of them are pretty obnoxious, but nevertheless, they're there. Uh, even Pinterest is pushing what they call idea pins. Um, they want more and more people to create that as well. YouTube is still huge. People, I'd say younger generations go to YouTube even more than older generations when they search for information, search for how-tos. So it's, you know, LinkedIn is the same. I mean, they have this creator mode and you get access to live streams. So they want more and more people to do live. Spotify, I think yesterday just announced they were going to start doing live streams. And I know the Eurovision uh, Music Awards are going to be live streamed on TikTok. So if anything, I mean, if you think about all the time we used to spend watching television, right? Hours and hours, it's all now being consumed in different video formats all across social media. So that by far is the number one area that companies really need to get better at if they want to remain relevant. Um, for people, it might be a little bit different. Um, obviously, the more raw, the more you know, human we are, um, even on platforms like LinkedIn, like selfies or just thoughts of the day that come really from experience and from the heart, those things can really resonate and do very, very well on that platform. Um, but on, on a majority of platforms, it really has come down to video. And if you want to get more impressions and more engagement, um, you sort of have to play the video game for now. Might change in the future, but for the foreseeable future, that's definitely the way to get visibility. Makes a lot of sense. Uh, video definitely is, is picking up. Uh, how do you stay ahead of the game? Uh, you know, algorithms are favoring video now. What is next? Is it VR? Uh, is it the metaverse? Well, Facebook bet their name on it, <laughs> literally. Um, you know, NFTs are really interesting. I, I think 
the way to look at it is this. We have influencer marketing. It was never called the influencer economy, but now we have something called the creator economy, right? Like people are saying, don't call me an influencer. I'm a creator. So it, it, the word influencer, it, for some people and for a lot of reasons, is, has sort of a bad take to it, unfortunately. And I'm trying to, my book is all about re-educating people, saying, no, it, you know, it, it's companies that are not doing it right or they're just collaborating with the wrong people. That's the problem, not, not influence itself. But influence is something that has been around before influencer marketing. But now we have the creator economy. And you know, I talk in my book that every influencer is a content creator. You cannot gain influence in social media without creating content, right? So they are content creators. But what they are finding now is there are many ways to monetize their content. You know, it began with affiliate marketing or very simple things. Then we have like brand collaborations. And depending on the network like YouTube, brand collaborations are still huge. But we can also get ad revenue on YouTube, for instance, or we can get companies now, and I talk about it in the book a little bit, but one of the big trends in influencer marketing over the last two years is companies that are paying influencers not for the amplification of content, but for the content because influencers are awesome content creators. So we just want you to create the content for us that we're going to use in our ads. You don't need to publish it on your own you know, profile. And we've seen a lot more of this. So now content creators are getting paid in many, many different ways. Content creators are starting to do Amazon drop shipping. They're starting to create courses. Um, they're, you know, they're, they're putting up their own websites. They're creating their own apps. They're, they're starting to monetize their knowledge and experience and community in many, many ways. And that is the creator economy, which is uh, calculated to be about $100 billion this year. Influencer marketing now is only a part of that. Influencer marketing is only what creators are getting from brands. So now if I'm a creator and I have a big following and I have people that are paying me, you know, $5 a month on Patreon, what have you, now we have something called NFTs. And now I can begin to say, hey, if people that are following me, if they are already have some Bitcoin and they're already collecting NFTs, I can offer unique NFT experience, right? Um, I'm going to be attending uh, I'm going to give a shout out to Joe Polizzi, godfather of content marketing. I'm attending his Creator Economy Expo, which is just a few weeks from now in Phoenix, Arizona. And we were talking, you know, before uh, I had him on my podcast and he was saying, Neil, when you come out with a new book, you should definitely use NFTs. Give people like a limited edition way of getting hold of you, right? Which then they can sell. It may be worth money someday. Um Joe uh, created some lifetime Creator Economy Expo NFTs. If you want to get lifetime access to going there every year, buy the NFT. And guess what? If you don't want it, you want to sell it, well, hopefully it appreciates in value. So I have my own membership community called Digital First. I could make that an NFT as well and say, hey, everyone who pays monthly, I'm going to give you the NFT, which then if you want to stop subscribing, you can give to someone else and then they become a member. So when you think about it, not everybody does NFTs, right? It's still a very, 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 very small amount of the population, right? But the number of people that are investing in Bitcoin is growing and the interest in NFTs is growing. And it is another way for creators. We've seen Gary Vaynerchuk start to leverage this. So for creators, it is another way to monetize everything else they're doing. And for brands, if you're a consumer facing brand, like a Disney, it makes sense to have this a collectible that it's limited edition and your big fans would love to have. If you're a Coca-Cola, whatever it is, right? Um, th the example I like to give is my uh, my kids are in high school now, but my son, when he was a little bit uh, younger, he was really big into Fortnite. And he paid $10 for a skin so his character would have the uniform of uh, Jared Goff, who was quarterback of the Los Angeles Rams at the time, no longer on the Rams. Um, but th that is, in all essence, an NFT. It is a digital property that has no tangible value except to the person who owns it. And if that was an NFT, he might be able to sell it to a big Detroit Lions fan because they're a huge Goff fan and they'd love to have that LA Rams Goff collectible. So when you think about it that way, and when you think about the metaverse and everybody having their own collectibles and everybody wanting their own collectibles and everybody being able to sell their own NFT for nine cents or 99 cents, um, it almost gets back to the days of clout. 
of everybody having an influencer score. And this is really niche, but there used to be a platform called Empire Avenue. And Empire Avenue allowed you to uh, basically invest virtual coins into the stocks of social media users who had a stock price that was determined by supply and demand. So we're almost going back to that. So yes, there's a huge, you know, would people pay $5 to be able to, you know, support someone on Patreon? There's a lot of people doing that. Why wouldn't they pay 99 cents for an NFT that maybe 10 years down the road they could sell for $9? So yes, I think it's coming and I think it's gonna be massive. I'm still in a wait and see approach, but I think it would be very, very smart for people and for brands to start looking into, you don't have to evangelize it, you don't have to start investing in it, but to better understand the principles behind it. Because there's a lot of money moving in there. And my guess with Elon Musk just today, we're recording this, Elon Musk with a buyout offer for Twitter, Twitter has become the place where people talk about NFTs over the last year. It is where NFT influencers are. It's where you can influence the pricing of NFTs through conversation. So if there is no doubt in my mind that Elon Musk understands that. And what he wants to do with Twitter is really to take on Metaverse and really go full head into that uh, arena. Uh, you know, I don't know, uh, for those of you that don't know, maybe because I'm a verified user on Twitter, but I can enact my tip jar recently. So I can accept Twitter tips in Bitcoin. And I've never had a Bitcoin account. I opened it from Twitter. So you can imagine this future, and I think it's coming, right? Maybe 5, 10, 15 years down the road, but I, I think it's going to come. And I think therefore that that by far, you know, forget this like AR, VR, it's just NFT. It's just the virtual collectibles. Um, and another way of investing a little bit of your money and getting some special benefits like, hey, buy my next book. I'll have 100 NFTs valued at $49 a piece. And every month they give you access to one hour private coaching time with me, just as an example, right? Maybe nobody buys it. Maybe some people buy it, right? But it, it becomes an asset, it becomes something that people can trade and it keeps my name out there as well. So hopefully that gives you, I'm still very, very new to the NFT scene, but based on what I'm understanding about it, I think that is sort of where there, there's another future, but it's not just about NFTs. Everything else is still relevant, but it is something that I would definitely start to look more into, hopefully after you listen to this podcast. Interesting. You have got me curious now. Uh, I'm going to you know, look into NFT as well this weekend. That's going to be my weekend project to just kind of educate go. myself. But I, I think this is a new perspective to me as well. Wonderful. Uh, switching gears here, uh, at the start of the podcast, you mentioned uh, things like SEO, et cetera, are still required, uh, still very much needed because we're looking at digital marketing holistically. Uh, how would brands leverage social media to kind of bump up their SEO? Uh, is there a way to kind of do that, marry SEO and uh, social media? You know, you you really can't. The way I look at it, as I'm writing this book, I'm saying, look, if you want to digitally engage with people, there's basically three big areas where people consume information. Social media by far. It is the number one thing we do when we're online, right? But when we have a need, when we have search intent, when, we, when we're looking for a solution, an answer, a product, we go to a search engine, primarily Google. But for, like I said, for some, it's YouTube. For some that want to learn something, they do a search for podcasts, right? These are all, you know, what, Amazon is a search engine for products as well, right? So the SEO is, is a part. Instead of trying to engage with people, we're trying to engage with search engines. And then in the middle, I believe we have email. Yes, there's more text, but email is still a major, major channel. And I have companies that make more from their email marketing of a 10,000 person list than a $100,000 annual spend on Google ads. That's how much, that's how profitable email marketing when done right can be at a very, very low cost, just the cost of monthly email marketing spend. So, you know, the SEO requires content. And social media requires content. So yes, I think there is a way of marrying those things together because if you're creating content for SEO or you're creating for YouTube video content, you can repurpose that for your social media. And that would be, I think, the way that it's married is through the art of repurposing. Um, whether a podcast as well, you can do little sound bites for your social media. So that to me is the extent of it. But you know, when we're looking at influencers, 
in social media, a lot of those influencers also have blogs. And some of those blogs have authority. And if we're somehow able to get a link from their blog to our website, that helps our SEO as well, right? Um, I just actually published a new free ebook on guest blogging because there is a influencer marketing aspect to SEO that a lot of people miss out on. And guest blogging is sort of the key to that, developing relationships with influencers that have websites, that have blogs, that have authority. So yes, there is a way to marry, uh, th there is a marriage between the two. It's a little bit thin, but the unifiers are the content and the relationships. Interesting. So the basic principles of authenticity, relationship, and great content, I think that applies on multiple platforms. Uh, maybe the trick Amen. is to kind of fit in in the right manner uh, and repurpose it in the right way. But at the base, base level, you've got to be authentic. Yeah, you know, um, there's a term called suit up. Uh, I'm a big fan of How I Met Your Mother. You, you see in the back here, the X-Files poster. I'm a big, you know, popular culture TV fan. This idea of like suiting up. You know, marketers are always suiting up. They feel they have to speak a certain tone, right? They have to maintain the corporate brand identity. And what I'm saying is when you want to engage with influencers, engage with others in social media, don't suit up. No one is suited up. Everyone is in their own, their own clothes, right? Be more human about it. Um, have more natural conversations as if you were talking to an actual human. And I think when brands start to do this, uh, there's examples like brands like Taco Bell that do a wonderful job of speaking to their followers as if they were having a casual conversation with them, friend to friend. And, and that is the ultimate way to humanize your, your brand's identity in social media. And I think whether you're B2C or B2B, regardless of platform, I think a little bit of that human touch can go a long way. And the more you want to sort of protect that brand identity and the more you suit up and the more standoffish you are, the more distance you create from your brand to the actual user, the less effective you are in social media. Uh, I, I mean, I can go back to that, that social media examiner post and maybe if they had changed their tone, hey, a lot of people think LinkedIn sales navigator is a complete waste of $100 a month. We're here to prove you wrong. If you're in sales, this is an absolute no brainer. And here are the top 10 reasons why. And that sort of a tone can be a lot, it sounds a lot more natural than we investigated LinkedIn Sales Navigator and these are the top 10 tips you should look for. Maybe their language is better. I don't know. I didn't look at the actual caption, but you get the feeling that that language is so critical and it really starts with a mindset and really shifting your mindset so that you're just more in tune with other people. You're more natural, more human. Well, one of the things that I'm facing uh, a challenge around as a business owner is finding great talent on like who can manage social media, right? Mm. Well, what's the secret of finding great talent? Uh, is is there a talent out there that can be found or is it something that we have to develop, you know, in the home ground? The best thing about social media is that more and more people are becoming better at it, right? So maybe you already have employees that are really good at it. Now, there's a lot of people who are really good at it. My, my 17 year old daughter, she's my go-to person when I have a question about TikTok. Um, they don't always use it or they don't use it for business. So they're really good at using it personally, but they don't understand that businesses have certain requirements, certain parameters, and therefore you need to often teach them. So it, it, it's difficult in that aspect. But I also think that if they understand the basics of social media, if they're heavy social media users, you can train them to use it on behalf of your company. I am a big fan of leveraging global talent. Uh, wherever they exist. So I would say there are tons of talent out there that can help you. If you can't find them locally, if you can't find them in your own country, go outside of your own country, especially if it's a common language like English. They are throughout the world. They exist. Uh, you know, there are platforms that I love to use like Upwork or Fiverr. If I'm a business owner, um, you know, finding the right person is not easy you might need to spend a little money to experiment with a few different people, but I think you can often find really, really good people. I, I have found some great talent in countries, obviously India, but not just India, Pakistan, Nigeria, um, Eastern Europe, including Ukraine, uh, Philippines. So, you know, more and more small businesses are leveraging more and more global talent and therefore more and more of this global talent is becoming more talented and more in numbers. So, you know, if, if you're struggling, that would be the number one place I'd look right now. Interesting. Uh, we leverage a lot of global talent as well. Uh, we have teams in India, US, a uh, couple of other countries. But yeah, uh, 
it's it's a good good idea to kind of you know find good social media users and train them train them for the business. Uh, we'll start experiment at home in social pilot, and then we'll see how that goes. Wonderful. Uh, Neil, I have tons of more questions, but I want to be mindful of your time as well. Uh, I think there's a lot of information that you uh, you shared, and uh, it's going to take some time for me to digest. I'm sure a lot, a lot of our listeners would kind of reach out to you as well. Uh, where can people find you? Well, uh, I try to be authentic and, and sort of drink my own medicine. So I am Neil Schaefer everywhere. Uh, I am the real Neil, so that's N-E-A-L. And there's a few Schaefer's out there in, in sales and marketing. So my last name is spelled S-C-H-A-F-F-E-R, neilschaefer.com, Neil Schaefer everywhere in social media. I have my own podcast called Your Digital Marketing Coach with Neil Schaefer. So give that a look. And all the eBooks and things I talked about, I have a section on my website called neilschaefer.com slash freebies. And if you go there, you can find all these free eBooks and resources that I talked about. I, I really want, I sort of joke about it with my kids. Um, there's something called, I don't know if you're familiar with Khan Academy. And it's it, Khan Academy is a, is a free resource for kids to basically, for homeschool kids or, or even for other kids to basically learn everything they need to learn to graduate from high school. It's this amazing resource put together by a gentleman with the last name of Khan, and it's completely free. And I sort of envision my website, neilshaver.com, becoming that for digital marketers, for social media marketers. And that's why I'm just, I'm, since COVID, I've been investing a lot of time into publishing content that's hopefully going to help a lot of people. So um, yeah, I hope that you'll check that out and check out the freebies. And I look forward to answering any questions you might have. Yeah, that's a very noble quest. Neil, thanks a lot for your time. Really appreciate this. And I'm sure a lot of people will reach out to you. Have a wonderful Thank day. you, my friend. Thank you. The Art of Social Media is brought to you by Social Pilot. To find out more about Social Pilot and how we can give you everything you need to hit your social media marketing goals, visit socialpilot.co. And then make sure to search for The Art of Social Media in Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and Google Podcasts, or anywhere else podcasts are found. Make sure to click follow so you don't miss any future episodes. On behalf of the team here at Social Pilot, Thanks for listening.